Today, we celebrate the enlightened teacher, Jesus of Nazareth. He was such a man. He came into the world and said that, yes, believe, but that wasn't the end of it. He said, believe in me, but that wasn't the end of it. I rather think, I suppose I can't prove it, but I rather think that he knew that if people believed in him and what he was bringing to them, they could feel it resonant within themselves. And then he was very explicit that love ought to be fulfilled. Love ought to be fulfilled, and we, we should know. We should come to a place of knowing. So faith that doesn't lead to knowledge, that is just faith without knowledge, is one thing. Faith that leads to knowing is another thing. There's a reason to have faith in things you don't know if it's leading you to know them. So here's what was exceptional, radical about what he brought. And I can boil it down to essentially two things that are very much related. The world had already said that you should love God. It was one of the commandments of Israelite culture. And revering the gods, fearing the gods, loving the gods, that was already on earth. That wasn't radical. Here's the radical part. Oneness. The love ought to be fulfilled with union, knowing union with the divine, with the creator, being a co-creator, a part of the creator, with all the powers of creation in us, known by us, flowing through us and into the world. I'm not going to quote scripture to you this morning, but he said it explicitly, as explicitly as you could say it, that they all may be one. Well, I just did. That, that they all may be one. He taught oneness. He taught union with the divine. And then in that union, knowing that union for yourself, knowing oneness with the people in your life. And the way he said it was, thou and me and I and them. Oneness. Intercourse. Interplay. Dialogue. Interaction. A back and forth. Oneness. Love fulfilled. Not just love from afar, not just an unrequited love. No, he knew that the divine loved him. He let it in and he let it out. And he loved back. That's fulfilled love. He taught fulfilled love. So he said something else, which was, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's not the only place he said something like that around knowing, but that's a teaching about knowing, is it not? You will know the truth, not just believe it, not just have faith. You will know. And in, in that knowing, we have the power of life. We hear the word resurrection on relative to Easter. And typically related to superstition. Somebody who was dead rose from the dead. Faith without knowledge. Can we relate to resurrection as something real? Resurrection, the word means something like spiritual regeneration, vitalization, 
a calling back to life or call, calling to life or greater life. You can't take something that's dead and make it alive. But it's calling to life. So the fulfillment of love and knowing brings resurrection. We have this fabulous power of consciousness, which is so instrumental in the whole thing. The power of consciousness, the human mind and heart, to open, to receive, and then to consciously give, to consciously love. And then move in the cycles of, of love in which that love is fulfilled for us, for the world in which we live. And then how does it get fulfilled? It gets fulfilled through us as a creator, as a co-creator with the creator of all. Jesus had that power, the power of consciousness, the power of consciousness to bring life and allowing those things to be fulfilled in, in himself. He had the power to sustain life within himself and bring life to the world, which he clearly did. And it's been driving us crazy ever since. Because when you hear that note of love that comes pure through a human being, it's like, no matter what you say, however you want to deny it, ignore it, look away, you've still heard this tone, this essence that is the most precious thing in all of life, without which none of life means anything. And to the degree that a person looks the other way and doesn't allow it in and allow it to be fulfilled within themselves so that they are receiving that love and they are giving it and allowing it to be fulfilled in their world, it's driving them crazy. Don't let it drive you crazy. Let it be fulfilled in you. Let it let yourself come into a place of the fulfillment of love, your love, the love of all, and the fulfillment of your knowledge, your knowing, which is an uh, as a verb, knowing your world and the people in it. And that's resurrection. 